This is The Pastor's Heart and Dominic Steele and thanks for joining us. Uh, an extra edition of The Pastor's Heart. We're on location at EV Church in the Central Coast where, well, there's this big Reach Australia conference. It's being hosted here at the EV Church on the Central Coast, but then networked across Australia. We're halfway through the conference and I thought we might touch base with the keynote speaker, Gary Miller, the chair of the Gospel Coalition Australia and principal of Queensland Theological College. And Gary, we're going deeper with God this couple of days. What do you mean by that in your addresses? I think the gospel itself is bigger than often we um, manage to communicate. And behind that, obviously our God is an awesome God. And I think this conference is is trying to make sure that both as individuals, as many gospel workers, and also as churches that we aren't kind of selling ourselves and the world short mm -hmm. by living, communicating, kind of running with a sort of emaciated gospel mm -hmm. that doesn't actually kind of deliver all that God holds out to us in Christ. They put up on the screen a couple of um, worrying statistics in terms of, if you like, spiritual maturity across broader Protestantism, but then amongst reformed Protestants. and we weren't as different as we'd want to be. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that was really quite arresting, <laughs> wasn't it? Um, I, I think one of the great strengths of Reach Australia, you know, and the, the, kind of the, the, the organization and the movement is that they, they do really encourage us to, to take a long, hard look at what is actually happening in church, mm -hmm. rather than what we would like to think is happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and even in some of the discussions, listening to the other guys, and um, I think in my own involvement in church, you know, I realized, you know, for me, there's a tendency to say that things are are happening in church when they're not really happening. You know, so you know we have gospel communities or growth groups. You know, and I, w I wish I'd a dollar for every time I'd heard or I'd said, oh, you know, we do prayer in growth groups, we do pastoral care in growth groups. Growth groups are our primary way of discipling people without ever actually stepping back and saying, are we praying mm -hmm. in the way that we should? You know, are people being discipled? You know, Andrew Hood gave us a pretty firm slap around the face on that issue. <laughs> <laughs> With clarity and gentleness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think, I think that's just really helpful, you know, to, to sit back and say, what is actually happening? What, what do we expect? What do we want to happen? What are we aiming for? whether it's in small groups or across the whole life of the church. Mm. And that ecosystem that they're talking about, how did that impact you? Oh, I, I think um, at times when I've heard kind of talks about you know, how we can better organize church to, to achieve better goals, sometimes I've just had the sneaking suspicion that it really all it's doing is saying, this is the ministry model you should be, you should be using. Mm -hmm. And and I've always been slightly troubled with that because I'm going, okay, I'm, I'm you know, living in Queensland. I'm going, how's this going to go down in Longreach or, you know, or in the church that I'm part of? Or how's it going to work in a Prezi system or an Anglican system? And, and sometimes those answers aren't altogether obvious. But I think the, the power and the, the ecosystem idea is really saying that, you know, that it takes, it takes the whole life of the church to do the work of the church, you know, that the impact of the gospel is not something that we can just kind of pigeonhole into this ministry activity here or, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not just we have a problem with evangelism, so, you know, run an evangelistic course. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a much bigger problem than that, a much bigger issue, and it is, it's every part of the church mm -hmm. contributes to this, mm -hmm. which I think is, yeah, I think it's profoundly biblical and actually, I think almost accidentally kind of ties in with this, the stuff that, that I'm looking at in Isaiah, mm. you know, which really is about, in a way, a bigger God and a bigger gospel. Mm. Which, well, which well tell us about that, because you started off uh, in your yeah. first session yeah. on Isaiah 6.6 6 and the grand vision yeah. of the holy God. Yeah. yeah. I just think, you know, personally, I mean, for me, and I think, I think where we're at in Australia, we've been very effective in making church more accessible. 
Mm -hmm. you know, in really good ways. You know, I think, when I think, you know, back 30 years, you know, mm -hmm. to where we are now, um, I think church is a much easier place for someone to come into if, if they haven't grown up in mm -hmm. church. You know, they're, we relate to, you know, more like human beings and it's more culturally appropriate and, you know, the Bible is explained, I think, more clearly, generally across the board. The music we use is kind of recognizable to lots of people. But I suspect that in doing that, one of the things that we, we've, we've accidentally gone for is just the kind of level of church being, it's all, you know, it, it starts casual, continues stays casual. Ca stays casual and finishes casual. And at no point is there any sense that we meet the transcendent. We meet the transcendent God. You know, that this is ultimately about God drawing us to himself in the Lord Jesus and introducing us to, an, you know, to a whole new world of life in him with Christ in the power of the Spirit. Um, you know, and I think that's where, you know, that's why we started in, in Isaiah 6, because when Isaiah tries to explain why he does ministry the way he does, that's where he goes back. He goes, let me, let me tell you about what happened when I saw... Those who weren't there and didn't hear your first address, give us a little kind of nutshell. Oh, you know, that, that really, if, if we want to live seriously, to live holy lives, it actually begins with the Holy God and getting a glimpse of the holiness, the greatness of God through the gospel. When that happens, inevitably, we have to face our own unholiness, our own brokenness. And I think, you know, the power of the gospel is delivered, you know, in, in cracked vessels through people like us who are sinful and broken. But that the interesting thing about Isaiah, and I think the whole of the Bible, is that, that holiness, that being like God, like Christ, if you like, never becomes just a, an inward thing. It's not that we kind of turn in on ourselves and then kind of go and sit in a darkened room. It's that having met God and seen ourselves, we then take the gospel out. And then, you know, tomorrow I'm going to look at Isaiah 61, but it's yeah, the, 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 the transformative power of the gospel is not just to introduce us, you know, to Christ or to bring us forgiveness. It is this multifaceted thing that we will experience and enjoy for the rest, for the rest of our lives mm. um, and will ultimately you know, uh, be expressed as we enjoy God forever in the new creation. But it is this massive thing. And the challenge, I think, for us is not to go, you know, suddenly become complex or, you know, pompous or, you know, to, to start relating in ways that are deeply kind of anti or countercultural in, in the wrong sense, but to actually express the greatness of God and the power of the gospel in all its richness in a way that's still simple. Mm. You know, and that's the, mm. I think that's the, that's the work of, of the Where church. Where are you going to go next? Because it's the hope in Isaiah 61. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to talk about uh, the, the Spirit of the Lord passage that Jesus preaches his first sermon on, as far as we know. And, you know, there's a reason why Jesus went there. It's a sneak preview. Come on. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> but I just, I just want to say that, that G, you know, Jesus, the spirit, the, the anointed conqueror in Isaiah 61 says, here's what I'm going to do. And Jesus then basically picks that up and says, this is what I'm going to do. But in Isaiah 61, you've got this kind of nine or ten kind of sided um, exposition of the hope that's ours in the gospel. And so I just want to try to point out that as we emerge from COVID, when I think still there is a window, I think people are still slightly rocked. Mm. I think we bounce back very quickly. Yeah. I don't know how long that will be there for. Yeah. But at the minute, I think we have an opportunity to show people that we do actually have hope that no one else has. Mm. But that it's not, you know, it's not just hope of the life to come or it's not just hope of the hope of forgiveness. It is, you know, this extravagant, all-encompassing hope of new life in Christ. So, so if, if you really wanted to do that, yeah. what would you be recommending we preach on at the moment? Do you know, in, in this little window of time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a great question. Um, it's interesting, in the church I'm part of, we're preaching, we're preaching on 1 John. Mm -hmm. 
and and I think I think actually that's partly what John is doing. Mm-hmm. going round mm-hmm. <laughs> round and round holding the gospel up mm-hmm. saying this is what it's this is what it looks like to be mm-hmm. part of the people of God yeah so I think I mean there's a sense in which I'm like I think you could preach from nearly anywhere because I do actually think that the whole Bible celebrates the beauty and power of God mm-hmm. um, and and ultimately spells out the hope that we have to look forward to but yeah but I think I think positivity I would l- be leaning towards positivity mm-hmm. and those places in the Bible whether you know something like Isaiah or you know really anywhere in the New Testament mm-hmm. that celebrates sure. what God has done for us in Christ. Yeah. Now I was talking to you just before we started uh, yeah. this session and and I, I said let's just talk about um uh, theological college yep. students bounce because you're principal of Queensland yes. Theological College. How is the college bouncing back from COVID? Um, it's been really a, a great year for us so far. We're deeply encouraged. Mm-hmm. Um, COVID through COVID, our enrolments actually increased. Mm-hmm. I think we do joke, you know, it was the, the combined effects of COVID and also the principal being on study leave for six months. <laughs> and, you know, those two things produced my, you know, significant growth. But I do think there were, there were quite a lot of people who were, you know, in that process of thinking through on the journey to theological college. And I think COVID just made them think. And that, that phenomenon seems to, I mean, I think yeah. all colleges in yeah. New South Wales have yeah. the same yeah. situation. I don't yeah. know about other places. It's, it's interesting. It hasn't been universal. Right. We're part of a consortium of 17 colleges. And I think, I think there were only four were up. Right. But, but certainly that's been our experience. And I think a lot of students said, we're, we're coming sometime, COVID hit, they went, okay, time is actually short. We don't know the future. Let's get on with mm. what really matters and get equipped for gospel ministry. Yeah. We've, been, we've been delighted, just the, the, the caliber of student, just in terms of people who are really serious about serving the local church in evangelism and gospel ministry or taking the gospel overseas we've just seen that I think steadily grow over the years but again you know this this year's first year that's just very evident Mm. Um, just a I don't know a higher level of commitment determination um, to serve Christ by serving his church so that's been very encouraging for us Mm -hmm. and just a strong desire you know um, in the students to be really well equipped whatever comes next it's interesting i think i think students are much more teachable certainly than i was or you know my friends were you know i i think there's a humility and and a willingness they just you know come and say teach us basically Mm -hmm. i think the slight you know i think one of the challenges will be i think my you know my generation were more arrogant uh, but kind of probably a bit more resilient, yeah. a bit more robust. I and mean, I'm hearing that across the board. Yeah. I mean, some people have said this is the most um, equipped generation of ministers, but also the most fragile generation of ministers. Yeah. yeah. Is that? You, uh, would you agree with that? I think there. I think there is. Yeah. I think there's some truth in that, but I think it's almost too early to say. I think we'll we'll see down the track. I think the world's changed. Mm. You know. <laughs> Even at the level of, I mean, even when I was at uni, you know, like extensions, I'm sure they existed. But, you know, we sat up all night to get assignments in. and I you know, never asked for an extension. No, nor, nor did I, but, but I don't even remember anyone asking yeah. for them. I, I think people are, are much more adept at kind of managing their lives. I think they're much more aware of their, you know, physical and mental health mm-hmm. needs. Mm-hmm. I, don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, you know. Mm. But but we'll see. I think I think time will tell. Now, um, as I sat down, I, I, you've just had this extraordinary thing. You sent me a letter last week, and okay. we've heard it in the news. Yeah. Um, the college. Uh, well, first, some people won't know the news about what's happening with the denomination. Oh. Uh, the Presbyterian Church um, in Queensland is now in receivership, really because of an issue that. Uh, took place several years ago in the aged care arm of the denomination in Prescare. 
so that then there's a knock-on effect. It impacts the churches, it impacts the yeah. theological college. It's, it's, yeah, it's still before the courts. We don't know we don't know whether it'll ultimately affect churches or not. It's fairly likely that it will affect um, the uh, QTC because we're in a denominational building. Mm. So you're in a denominational building and um, you sent a letter out to me and others saying, could we buy the college or could we? <laughs> <laughs> you're more than welcome to. Yes, yes uh, we're, we think the most judicious thing that we can do um, at the moment is seek to raise the funds for people to invest in or or help us to buy the college in order to safeguard the home of QTC into the future. And is that looking, I mean that I've never tried to buy a theological <laughs> college before. I've, I've never tried to sell one. No. <laughs> uh, one of the things is being very encouraging you know, just to to kind of be to know that people all across the world are praying for us, mm -hmm. that no one wants to see the ministry of QTC fall over. It, it's very early days, mm -hmm. you know, but there are there are some some encouraging signs. But I think it is a it's been a strange experience for me, Dominic, because yeah, you know, we're we're talking about probably eight million dollars, yeah, you know, that kind of <laughs> In a relatively short space of time, you know, humanly, that's that's impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a sense in which we do just have to trust God and look to Him to provide a solution. You know, I think if it had been, you know, a smaller amount, you know, if it had been, you know, you need to raise a million dollars in four weeks, mm -hmm. the temptation would have been to say simply, "Okay, right, we can do this. Let's go." Mm -hmm. Th there's a sense in which, you know, just the, the metrics of it have kind of pushed us very quickly to a place where we go yes of course we can let you know let people know there is this need you know but um raising eight million dollars with you know donations of fifty dollars each that's not going to work it's it, no you know so so in that sense you know of course we need to take responsibility and be prudent and make people aware but there is a sense in which we, we need I mean, God. I, I, I know when um, the Bathurst Anglican Church yes. got in trouble, yeah. they had to sell off some schools yes. yeah. and they ended up selling some schools to the Sydney Anglican Church, yeah. Anglican Schools Corporation. Yes. And yeah. as far as I can tell, that's been a happy ongoing relationship yes. that, yeah. that, um, that schools corporation has two more schools and yeah. They're functioning well, and yeah. that that's been a good outcome. Yeah. Could we have a national Presbyterian Theological <laughs> College or something like that? <laughs> that's right. There are there are a lot of possibilities. So discussions are up. They're happening. Every you know, we're at the stage. We need to. Everything is kind of on the it's table. Kind of on the table. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I think though, for us, you know, as a staff, we're you know we're you know QTC as a, as an entity. You know, it's not the building. Well. And yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, for us, the very last resort would be to stop doing what we're doing. Mm. So, you know, we just, we just need to... It looks good and we just got to pray that somebody... Yeah. Yeah. And we are able, the good news is, I mean, we heard today, you know, for example, we're able to, you know, the, the receivers are very happy that we enroll people for semester two. It's business as usual, you know, so we have a little bit of time to, to address the longer term. And as if you didn't have anything else to do, you're also pastoring one of the largest churches in Queensland. <laughs> I'm helping to look after, yeah, Mitchelton uh, Presbyterian. How's that going? Uh, personally, oh, it's, always, it's hard to say. Um, we're in good hearts. I think every church, when you know, they're, we're looking for a senior pastor, we need to you know, rebuild, rebuild the staff. Uh, been a couple of people moved on. Um, but, but for me, it, it's just, uh, it's very encouraging to be back. I, I know the congregation well. We were part of the part of the church for five years. Um, to be reminded, this is what we're training people for. You know, and for me, I always say the real action is not in in the theological college. You know, we're backroom staff. The real action takes place in the local church. Mm -hmm. So for me to be, you know, preaching most of the time to you know people who are 
you know, living on the front line, you know, serving Christ in the world and in the community, that's a precious thing. Mm -hmm. And also, it's funny, it makes me listen a lot more attentively, attentively at something like Reach Australia. Yeah. As it, <laughs> you know, as along with the elders there, we're trying to think, okay, how, how do we move to the next stage in terms of establishing a gospel ecosystem that mm -hmm. really does, you know, under God produce, you know, mature disciples of the Lord Jesus who produce disciples. Mm -hmm. yeah. What a great thing, yeah. yeah. Um, now, Gospel Coalition Australia, yeah. what's happening there? Um, uh, we're obviously, like everybody else during COVID, it was kind of an interesting time, you know, we tried some new things. <laughs> <laughs> we tried an evangelistic campaign. You're, you're not going to do that no. again, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we'll do it better, Dominic. <laughs> Just do it positive. Better, better. Well, actually, no, I do want to talk, I want to talk to you about this because yeah. we, we had a really good follow-up discussion yeah. with David uh, Robertson yes. and Carl Fays and, yeah. and David Jensen and uh, the idea of a national evangelistic yeah. campaign like that passion for life in yes. the UK yeah. and um, whether I think it would be great if yeah. the Gospel Coalition could spearhead that. Yes, well, you know, this is... But it has to be positive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be so positive. It'll be <laughs> no, but that's that's where... You know, I think you know the, we when we started the Gospel Coalition, you know, we very deliberately said, "Look, this has to be this has to be organic in Australia. Yeah. This has to be us getting together, mm. people getting together across Australia, and saying where there's benefit mm. in us working together for the sake of the gospel. Let's do this. Mm. Let's do this. For me, this is exactly the kind of reason mm. we exist. Mm. It was it was never going to be, you know, here we are, you know, we're planting the flag, everybody come follow us. Mm. But where we can cooperate for the sake of the gospel, you know, this is this is really valuable. Mm. We've had a couple of conferences, you know, ac across Australia who just needed needed some support, an umbrella body, you know, to provide some, you know, kind of practicalities, you know, whether it's liability insurance or whatever, come under our umbrella. You know, we're just working to try to encourage gospel ministry on the ground. Mm. We are going to have a going to have a national conference, mm. uh, actually, in a kind of fairly similar model to Reach Australia for, you know. For church members, for Christians across the nation, um, just a, a Saturday afternoon, you mm -hmm. know, for four hours to get together. You know, we would love to see several thousand people across the nation, mm -hmm. you know, meeting in hubs, even drawing people together in communities from different churches who don't normally mix. We'll try it. Mm -hmm. We'll see if that's something that does actually contribute to encouraging God's people and sending them back, you know, the next day into local churches, you know, with just with a, a greater sense of encouragement, you know, as we've kind of come out of lockdown, we think this may actually be a way of trying to, to give people a sense that we're not just kind of locked in behind our borders to our individual mm -hmm. states, but that we are actually part of the people of God across Australia and across the nation. That has been a funny thing, hasn't it, in this COVID time of... Um, it, it's felt, certainly from some of the states, that their state identity has become a really, really big thing with these... Yes. We, you know, I mean, we haven't... I mean, you could have argued five years ago, why do we need state governments? Yeah. <laughs> and suddenly, oh, they seem to be important to some people. Yes. The power of the state, yeah. Kind of emerged again. Yeah, yeah. quite fascinating. Yeah, so that, and along with that, the website, I think with us, the one of the things, you know, that we're looking at is, I think the website does really, you know, it, it does exactly what we longed for it to do. They just provide a kind of an easy go-to place for people from our our world, our constituency across Australia, that is actually Australian, mm -hmm. you know, because we are different, our context is different. And we're just trying to look at ways that, you know, okay, how can we sustain this mm -hmm. in the long term? How we can we continue to make sure that it does actually contribute to the cause of the gospel? Mm -hmm. uh, and we're, we're looking at that. Great. Yeah. Gary Miller, thanks for talking to us. Thanks, Dominic. My guest on The Pastor's Heart, Dr. Gary Miller. He's the principal of Queensland Theological College. He's the chair of the Gospel Coalition Australia and also the keynote Bible teacher here at the Reach Australia Conference. We'll look forward to your company next time on The Pastor's Heart.